Okay, this video is going to look at skin injury and repair. And below in the description, you'll see some links to some sources where I pulled some of the images from, some great um, other slideshows to take a look at. I'm going to warn you the next uh, slide here is going to show some burn injuries. So some of the images may be considered graphic, so viewer discretion is advised. So getting to that skin injury, looking at burns uh, classified by severity. So first degree burns, only the upper epidermis is damaged, kind of like a sunburn here. Second degree burns, our upper part of the dermis is also damaged. Blisters can appear, um, skin can heal with little scarring. Third degree burns are more severe and they consume the thickness of the skin. Burn areas appear as white, red, or black, and you see it sadly on this person's uh, foot. There's also fourth degree burns, which I chose not to show. Uh, but this gives you an idea of first, being the most mild, second being in the middle, and third being the most severe in this case. So how does this skin go about repairing itself? When we have our, an injury, we're going to look at a cut injury, because that's probably more common. Uh, I should probably get, uh, and sadly, more often you'd like to admit. So bleeding occurs at the site of injury immediately after the injury. The mast cells in the region trigger an inflammatory response. So that's our first part here. You see this cut goes pretty down deep into the, the dermal layer. So we've got bleeding occurring. And have things rushing uh, to this site. So initially we might put a bandage over just to try to stop the bleeding. After several hours a scab should begin to form and these are cells migrating to the edges of the wound and there's um, a phagocytotic cells that remove debris. We want to clean this up because we have an injury now. Bacteria could get in here. We want to have a layer of cleaning up this debris. More cells arriving with enhanced circulation to the area. That's why it may feel warm and get red because you have more blood going to that area. Clotting around the edges of the affected area partially isolates the region. So the body wants to kind of eliminate bacteria from getting into the body because there's a wound site here. It's going to force a scab region, it's going to kind of seal the region off, increase blood flow to allow exchange of things and a lot of things being brought there. You try to isolate this region at least a little bit to try to limit the potential for damage. Moving on, after about a week of the injury, the scab has um, been undermined by epithelial cells, which you can see here. And we're migrating over this meshwork produced by the fibroblast activity. This notice that the scab is still located at the surface. Um, our fibrocytotic activity around the site is almost ended, and fibrin clot is being disintegrated. So we're noticing this transition. I mentioned that the scab is still present at the top here. So even though you may not think things are going on, there's a lot going on below in that dermal layer. This is why if you pick out a scab and remove this, you're kind of re-causing some injury site here, and you're not allowing the wound to have a sealed environment. And as a result, it can occur, can cause longer wound healing time if you remove this scab. You want to let it naturally kind of fall off because the body is working from the deeper dermal layer up through the dermal layer to the surface here. So it's starting deep in the dermal layer and working its way up. After several weeks, again, this is a more severe cut, the scab has been shed, it removes, falls off naturally. You notice it kind of gets itchy, kind of as your body trying to get to remove it, um, and the epidermis is complete. A shallow depression, though, marks the injury site. The fibroblast here and the dermal continue to create scar tissue that will gradually elevate the overlaying epidermis. So there still may be scar tissue present and left over a long period of time but we're noticing that for the most part, function is returned normally to the skin in the dermal region here. It's now for using that sealed barrier, continue on even though there may still be that mark left. So keep this in mind when you get a cut, don't wanna pick up your scabs, let it kind of naturally um, fall off to allow the body time to be able to go through this stepwise process to heal itself for long-term repair. 